All right, let's get started. In today's class, we're going to consider how we will build an interactive web app for our machine learning um, projects that we've been doing so far, right? So not that we just do the project and then we leave it in the Jupyter Notebook, no. We're going to take one more step by building a web application for these um, algorithms or for these projects that we've been dealing with so far um, with regards to our machine learning um, projects, okay? so. If, if you're given a task at your workplace or, I mean, if, you, if you're a student, right, enrolled in this particular course and you're doing the machine learning projects, um, what we expect you to do is to go beyond the Jupyter Notebook, right? Not just restrict yourself into the Jupyter Notebook. You get to have a concrete understanding following the, the project that we've been, do, we've been doing so far in the Jupyter Notebook, right? So uh, one more thing that you can do uh, when you're presenting your results to your stakeholders, your team, um, your team lead or your project managers, right? What you can do is that you can actually present it in a way that it become more interactive to them, right? I mean, um, talking of um, storytelling, talking of uh, your presentation skills, they are very, very important and uh, you're not just supposed to restrict yourself to the Jupyter Notebook, right? And trust me, most of the um, team leads, most of the um, um, managers or your, your, your whoever assign you with a task, most of them don't actually like looking at the code, right, in the Jupyter Notebook. It doesn't actually make sense to them. It makes sense to you, but it doesn't make sense to them, right? So let's see how we can do it by building an interactive web app, right? So today, well, that's what we're going to do. We're going to build an interactive web app. And let me show you what um, you'll be doing, right? So I'm going to run this from my, from my, um, I'm going to run this from my terminal, right? So from, if you're using Windows, you can also um, you do the same thing from, from your command line, right? So I'm going to use terminal here since I'm using Mac here. All right, so um, what, what we're going to do, let me actually first show you what we will do finally before I take you through the steps, right? So I'm going to use this, I'm going to run this. Um, don't worry about this if you, if you don't get it right. I'll actually make it bigger for you to actually see what I'm going to run, right? So I'm just going to run this, this simple command over here, right? Which is um, this, this simple command. We'll talk about it, so don't, don't worry about it. I just want to show you um, the output of this, right? So if I run this, right, it's actually going to take me to my browser, and here we come. All right, so this is the output that we have over here. This is a very beautiful interactive app that uh, we can build for a machine learning project. So with everything that we do in the Jupyter Notebook, right, for everything that uh, every project that we've been doing, we've been dealing with so far in the Jupyter Notebook, right, we can do the same thing. We can present the same thing in a form of an interactive web app, right? And that's what you're going to do today. So if, if what you can see on your on your on your on your screen right now is is an, it's a web app, right, that we've built for for this project and that's what you're going to do so um with i mean at the end of this this tutorial i expect you to build this from scratch by yourself right and then add it to your portfolio this speaks volume right this differentiates you from thousands of other students who are doing the same um jupyter notebook thing but not going beyond the, the limits right so this actually differentiates you from them right so let's see what what we can do with this so if i click here right, you see that i have drop files here right? i have drop files or browse files here, right? I have, I have something like that. So if I click on that, right, it takes me to my local system and I can just select any data set over here, right? So let me just select maybe say um, credit card that CSV here. So right, you see that it's uploading, right? It's now it's loading over here, right? You can see um, over here, right? It's, yeah, now it's loaded, it's loaded, right? So if, if it's running again, I'll show you what I wanted to show you, All right? So now you can see, you can see our data set is, I mean, has, has been a load, I mean, loaded for us, right? Just like we do in the Jupyter Notebook where we do that and then we see the head of it. It's just the same thing, but in this case, you're not showing them the code, you're showing them your web app, right? So if you want to expand this, you can just click on this one here and then you expand the data set like this, right? You can do that, right? So let me just minimize it again. All right, now, the same thing that you can do, right? So if, if, if you go back over here, right? So it's just a credit card, right? So it's just the same thing, the same data set that we are working on, right? So maybe you want to check the shape of it, right? You see that we, we did the shape of it over here. So we can do the same thing, right? You can do, um, you can do the same thing. You see that we have button here, which can display the shape, right? So uh, as you can see, it's, it's actually running, right? It's actually running. Now this is done, right? So. You can see now we have the shape, right? Two, um, we have 284,807 um, rows or records with 31 
um, columns, right? It's just the same thing that we have, right? The same thing that we have over here, right? So the same thing that we do in the Jupyter Notebook is the same thing we are bringing here in our browser here, right? Building a web app for it, right? So now if you want to display the columns, you can also do that, right? I'm going to take you through step by step um, in how you will build this, right? So these are the various columns that we have, right? These are the various columns that we have. And uh, maybe you want to select, maybe you're not interested in all of these, right? You want to select some of them. You can actually do that, right? If you click on this, it's actually going to give you an option that you can, um, you see that now I have, now I have um, option here. I can choose from option here. So, okay, so let me select some random columns over here, right? So I'm um, just selecting any columns at all. Maybe you should add our targets here. So you can see that it's, it's actually um, it's actually running, right? It's just running from here, right? So you can actually see it's over there. All right, and you can stop it. If you want to stop it, you can just click on the stop for it to stop, right? But it's now running. So uh, just let's just see the result here. Now you see, you see that we've been able to slice some columns out of all these um, columns, 31 columns that we have. We've been able to um, slice some of them, right? So. We can display the summary for this. I mean, the summary is going to do it for all of them, right? I mean, you can also um, do it in such a way that you display the summary for, for I mean, just the selected columns, right? You can also do that. All right. Okay, so you see that now we have we have the summary. So um, over here, you can see that we have, um, if I should, let me, let me even expand it here, right? If I expand it like this, you can see that we have the count, you have the mean, Right, we have the standard deviation, the minimum, the 25th percentile, the 50th percentile, the 75th, the maximum, right? You see that we have over the, let me minimize it again. So we see that we have the summary, right? If you want to check if there are any null values, right? So the same, the same thing that we do in the Jupyter Notebook is the same thing that we, our app here is doing, right? So our app will make it more interactive and more simple for um, people who are not from the coding background who don't really want to see how we coded it. They just want the results, right? And that's why we need to find a way to present to them in such a way that um, it need to be fun, right? So if, if you see, now you can see that we, have, we don't actually have any null values in here, right? We don't have any null values in there, right? We can check the data type, right? We can check the data type. So anytime you click on a button, you will be seeing the running over here that is showing that it's running, all right? Don't forget, that this is a huge data set and that's why it's taking a little bit of time, right? So. You can see that we have all the columns with the data types being presented. Right? You can check the correlation, right? So if you see this part too, you see that we are doing EDA, right? You can also go, maybe you want to do some visualization. You can click on that, right? You can click on the visualization. Now it's actually going to take us to the data visualization. Remember first we're doing um, EDA. So if you click on that, right, we're here, we're doing this, right? Exploratory data analysis. Now I'm going to select um, visualization from here, right? And you can actually see that it's, it's, uh, it has now taken us to data visualization. So over here too, we have different buttons, right? So we can actually select some of them. Let's select some of the columns and then uh, visualize them, right? So uh, we see that we have options here. So I'm just going to select um, some, some random columns over here, right? So let me just do it like that. Maybe our target column, right? So let me do that and then we can see some of the selected columns will be displayed to us, right? So um, depending on the columns that you select, it will actually be showing you. You see that it's running over here. Now you see that we have we have some of the selected columns. So let's let's display some um, heat map over here. Now you see the same the same heat map that you could have done in your Jupyter notebook is the same thing that we are doing here. This time we are not showing them the code. We're just showing them the front end, right? We're just showing them the app and they're just very interactive and uh, they can actually reason with us instead of um, showing them the code which is um, going to kind of going to be kind of a mess right so like this showing them this kind of stuff right so the same thing that you can see here is the same thing that we are plotting right so they don't really want to see this that what they want to see is the result and how you're going to interpret this results to them right so um we can also do we can also do a pair plot for that right you can also do a pair plot for that. So if I click on that, um, it's actually going to run and then display the result for us. Right, so I can even change the data set altogether, right? I can just change the data set here. All right, so instead of, um, 
maybe maybe I should just change it to this breast cancer, right? So we're dealing with credit card data sets, right? So I've changed it to breast cancer. Now you see that we have we have a different data set altogether, right? So we can also do that. Um, maybe let's let's see some of the columns that we can actually um, select over here. Um, maybe this and that, right? Let's see. Okay, so now you can see we have a different heat heat map altogether, right? If I want to display the pair plot over here, right, you can also do that, right? Now you see that we have it. Don't forget, I'm just selecting only benign and malignant, right? So you can select as many columns as you want and then display the result, right? And I can display the pie chart over here too, right? If I want to, I mean, this this pie chart will be more, um, it will be more more reasonable if, if you want to display the distribution of your of your target column, right? So this one is going to plot it for this, but I want to see it for, say, for, for let me pick the, my my target column and then that will make it more reasonable now you can see that we have 62.7 percent being one and then um 32 37.3 percent i mean zeros in there now this one makes more sense right and uh, they distribute you can actually see that the ones are i mean there's there's i mean if, if you want to talk about let's say um data imbalance right there's a but a, a better way to let's explain it to your to your team managers or your team leaders that um, we have data, data imbalance in there, right? There are more ones than zeros. And if you build algorithms on it, your algorithm is, or your model is going to end up predicting more ones than, I mean, zeros. Maybe this, this distribution is a bit, I mean, it's a bit, it's a bit fair. I mean, 62, 37 is a bit fair, but maybe um, in, in different data set, it could be maybe like 82, 82, 15 or something like that. I mean, in that case, you can actually tell them, explain it to them how how and then why if you build algorithm on it your model is going to be biased right so you're actually going to um be able to explain it to them better right so this is this is quite interesting and um we're going to do this right from scratch you can also there are several other other plots that you can do histogram bar graph area plots right you can do all of these over here right so um if that is it if, if you're going to go to say i mean the model part right so after after you build the model, you can also um, you see that one. So let me let me actually change it this. Let me click on that right, and then um over here let me select maybe that, and then I'll select see this malignant and benign. Okay, now if I do that right, if I do that, you see that I have I have um I have I have several several models that i can choose from right from knns svm logistic regression naive based decision tree right so all these are just i can show them different algorithms that i've built and the different results that i got right so if you see um for knn for instance i have 85 percent or 86 percent right over here right you can see the result that crazy that i have right i can change it and even i mean the seed remember that if you go to the jupyter notebook we set seed when we are um we are building algorithm where we're doing the random states, right? So let me go a little bit down here um, so that you can actually see what I mean by that. All right. Over here, now you can see that we set random states equals 27 over here, right? So over here, we've given you an option that you can set your C to. You can increase it as you want, right? So if you want um, random states equals whatever you want, right? And then see how the performance is actually doing, right? You can actually see this real time. Right, you can you see that we have 87 percent right if we increase this to say uh, 130 let's see we have 88 percent if we reduce it right so you can actually see how this is actually working instead of you testing it over and over again you see that if we reduce the seed the accuracy is reducing right and then remember in the k and then you need to choose k right so over here we can actually choose the k right and then test the different k's you see that we when we increase the k to six we have 91 percent let's increase it again and see um, what we are going to have, right? It's not actually giving us any improvement any further, right? So we can also choose a um, different algorithm altogether, right? You can choose a support vector machine. Remember in support vector machine, you need to choose your C, which is, um, I mean, your gamma and then the C. In this case, we gave an option for, for C. You can also add the gamma, right? So C is just the penalty, right? So over here, if you choose um, a different C, you're going to have a different um, result, right? You see that we have 80, 88% over here, right? So this is this is more interactive and uh, i mean this makes more sense when you're presenting your results in this format all right so we're going to learn how we will build this right from the scratch to this stage right right from the scratch to this stage okay 
I can see some beautiful um, images in there, right? So um, let me go back there and then you see. Then, I mean, you create an about, right? You create an about, so about, and the about page, that's where you're going to actually, um, that's where you're going to write, write whatever you are, you, are, you are trying to present, right? All your presentations, all your findings, right? You're going to write it at the about page, okay? So all these are something that you can do. If you go to this button, there are a lot of stuff over here that you can actually, you can go to the documentation. If you need any help there, you can ask the community, right? And uh, if you go to the settings, right, you see that if you see the way this is, right, um, let me change this settings to say um, run and save, right, and then uh, I show on up. If I do that, you see that it has become um, wider for us, right, it has become wider for us, okay? Now let me go back there and then uh, maybe maybe just run it on save and then do it like that. You see, it, says it has come back to the same stage you can you can actually um expand any 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 item that you have over there right you cannot do that all right you can also record your screen right if you want to record your screen and then show the the maybe maybe you're you're, you're working remotely and you want to show them something specific right you can actually record your screen so maybe i'm doing some eda here and i really want them to um see something with the movement of my Keza and me speaking or something like that. I can also do that using the record a screencast, right? I can also use that, okay? And if you find a new bug, you can report it as well, right? We have, I mean, there's, there's, there's quite a lot of things that you can actually do. So um, let's get started and see how we will build this app for our, I mean, you can do this for all the models that you're, you've been learning so far, right? For all the projects that you've been, you've been learning so far, you can do this for all of them and you can, make this presentation as, as good as possible instead of maybe presenting your jupyter notebook you can present it in this in this um in this format okay so let's get started and then um let me show you what what i mean how you're going to do with this right so in the next video we're going to actually start by creating this right from the scratch all right so see you in the next video